The Accident Mortgage and Realty Show is sponsored by Accident Mortgage, an equal housing lender, NMLS ID 255368, and Accident Realty Advisors, which is a separate company from but still affiliated with Accident Mortgage. Putting a roof over your head without the headache. Get answers to all of your home buying questions. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickers on 620 WTMJ. And our Sunday best to you. Welcome to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show. I'm Steve Kettler along with AccuNet Mortgage and AccuNet Realty Advisors owner and president Brian Wickard. And our licensed millennial loan consultant, David Wickard. As always, if you have a question or comment, you're free to call us at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the Acunet Mortgage toll-free talk line. That number is 1-800-877-1620. I always love when we have the latest home price appreciation numbers. Everybody wants to know, you know, what's your home worth? Yeah, that is, uh, you know, just the only time that really matters is when you're selling. But it's just a source of pride, and like, yeah, you know, I feel good about myself when my home value is up, and I feel lousy when it's down. So, yeah, we're going to cover the top ten markets nationwide, but probably more importantly, we've got the numbers on the Wisconsin markets, and there are some, a few, that are back to above the high watermarks of uh, 2007 wow. in terms of value. Yeah, not all of them. You're, there's quite a diversity. Uh, we've got, of course, have the rate update. Uh, Fed Chair Janet Yellen spoke on um, Friday, and the earth moved. The needle yeah. on mortgage rates and interest rates in general moved. We'll have a quick recap of that. Top five reasons why homeowners are afraid to refinance. I call that refi-phobia. And then a really good, I think it's an instructive and interesting story of a 10-year fixed refinance gone awry. A conversation you had. A conversation, a real conversation. All right, but let's start with those top 10 markets nationwide, and what we're using here is the Federal Housing Finance Agency, FHFA. They're the regulator for Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and the Federal Home Loan Banks, and this is the best data, way better than the realtor's uh, median home price, because this is looking at the same homes selling twice, okay? So you've got, this is a three-bedroom, two-and-a-half baths selling. It's the same one. address. It's the same address. They throw out the ones that have too big of a variance because they figure, well, it must have been remodeled. So, I mean, this is the statistically most robust stuff. All right. Uh, and number 10, Fort Collins, Colorado. Number 9, Reno, Nevada. Number 8, Bradenton. Reno, Nevada. Did they have just a, a long way to come back? Well, after? we're going to talk about that, maybe. And by the way, I should say these are the, the first two that I mentioned, and actually all three here are in the high 11s, 11.7, 11.7, and 11.8 year over year. So we're looking at prices in the second quarter of 16, yes. April, May, June, versus April, May, June of 15. So up 11% in those three, all right? Bradenton, Florida was in number eight spot. Now, listen carefully. Denver, Aurora, Colorado in seventh place with a 12% price appreciation. Greeley, Colorado, 12.3. Port St. Lucie, Florida, 12.5. Everett, Seattle, and Bellevue, Washington, 12.6. Portland, Oregon, 13.4. Palm Bay, Melbourne, and Titusville, Florida at 14. You've named just three places, Florida, Colorado, and the west, oh, the northwest. Good, and now in number one, Boulder, Colorado, at 14.7. should have bought that Boulder condo last year. Is that That's what you're right. saying? 14% year over year. Okay, over to you, Steve. What is the common element in six out of those ten oh, okay. cities that oh, I just boy. mentioned? Uh, David knows because he's smiling right. wryly. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with uh, their geography. All right, David. It wasn't it they just really uh, suffered uh, in the... Financial crisis? Am I overthinking this all of a sudden? Yeah, I'm okay. sorry to report that if you look at Colorado and Washington and Oregon, those are three of the four United States in the United States that have legalized pot. Oh. Oh, so there seems okay, so you to be all this different there's a correlation. Money. You have literally, and we have. A, I have a nephew, David's cousin, who lives in the Denver area, and that is one reason why people are moving to Colorado is because okay. recreational pot is legal. Come on. I am I'm not making that up. Look at that. Boulder, Colorado. Correlation Remember? is not causation, Mr. Economist. All right. But that, <laughs> I think you've got people moving to those states. And driving up prices, bidding wildly yeah. in the haze of their 
Yes, hi. Yes. Uh, hi, hey. That's, that's, all right. Let's move on to uh, Wisconsin and the markets that we serve, which also include, I always throw in a little uh, Naples, Florida, a little Minneapolis, St. Paul, a little uh, Chicago, because we do business in those areas. All right. On the year-to-year um, price appreciation, Madison's leading the way at 5.3. Eau Claire, home of the Blue Goals, 5.1. Green Bay. Home of the Packers, 4.3. Lacrosse at 4%. But, Wausau, 3.9. But again, this is, this is this time last year yeah. compared to now. That's right. Okay. So I'm giving you the quick rundown. Wausau, 3.9. Milwaukee, 3.8. Appreciation. Uh, Chicago, by the way, 3.7. Um, Janesville, 3.7. Racine, 3.1. Duluth, Superior, 2.8. Sheboygan, 2.8. Kenosha, 2.6. Higher than last year. Uh, Oshkosh, Nina, 2.5, Appleton 2.1, Fond du Lac 1.4, and the state of Wisconsin as a whole 5% when you add it all up. By the way, Naples up 10%. So if I so if the state of Wisconsin uh, last year I bought a house for two hundred thousand dollars, now it's worth two ten. You got it. So when we come back from this first break, though, I think the more interesting comparison is where are you from the peak? Okay. From peak values, how? How far back are you? Are you still underwater? Are you above, you know, where we were? We'll have those numbers when we come back. Right here on the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. Expert advice on buying a home. Here's more of the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. So what's it like to work for Milwaukee's mobile military gas station, the 128th Air National Guard refueling wing? John McCure takes you miles up into the air into one of their massive refueling planes and shows how the job is done. Check out the remarkable footage in our latest Do My Job series, which is now up online at WTMJ.com. You're listening to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ with Brian Wickert and David Wickard talking about home price appreciation values and comparing that to you know the peak before the crash and, and where people are now. That's right. So uh, let's dive into the uh, Wisconsin markets. Here's our little traditional quiz question. Which one do you think, which of the following metropolitan statistical areas um, do you think is above water and to the highest extent? Do you think it's La Crosse, Wisconsin, Eau Claire, or Madison? And I'm telling you, they're all winners. I cheated. I just looked. So, Steve, it's up to you. Okay, I'm going to go Madison. Uh, they, uh, Madison was up 4.4%. From its high water mark. All so right, then I'm going to hold on. Lacrosse. Uh, yep, Lacrosse. Lacrosse is up 10.2%. Wow. I got to call somebody in Lacrosse and find out what's going on. So, if we pretended that we bought a home in each of these markets for two hundred thousand dollars back at the peak, which is roughly two thousand seven in most markets, either two thousand seven late or early two thousand eight, that two hundred thousand dollar home in Lacrosse is now worth two twenty. Okay. Not bad. And it dipped, it only dipped as low as 194. So whatever they got there in La Crosse, it's some pretty good stuff. Hmm. Eau Claire is in second place, up 6.4% from the peak. So your $200,000 house that you bought is now worth 213. Uh, Madison up 4.4% from the peak. So you're now up to 209. Which if you pair that, it's always nice to have price appreciation because that's, a gain, but also during that whole time, you're also whacking at the principal every yeah. month you make a payment. That's so right. it's going, you're going both ways. You're both getting a little appreciation and also eating away at the outstanding balance. The only other two markets that are up or level from the peak in Wisconsin are Duluth Superior up 1%. Appleton is back. They're at zero. You know, they're right back to where they were. All right, now on the other end of the spectrum, Wisconsin as a whole, just by the way, is 1%. All right, Naples, Florida. What do you think, up or down, Dave? Down. Down still, yep. Uh, you bought that $200,000 house, which would be hard to do in Naples, but let's just pretend. <laughs> still only worth 148 Isn't that painting with a broad brush, yes. though? Yes, it because, is. Okay. Well, because right now I have a friend whose house is on the market in the uh, Milwaukee Metropolitan Statistical Area, where, just by the way, Milwaukee is still 5.9% below peak values. So that's 200000 If you bought that, it's now worth $188. Uh, but he's in the uh, seven dollars to $800,000 price range. Hmm. 
Been on the market for three months now. Guess how many showings? A handful. Zero. Ouch. All right, so right now, how much is that house really worth? Mm, no, nothing. Nothing? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, or it's, you know, Less. to be determined. Yeah. So this broad brush stuff is absolutely right. You know, you have different price segments within every market. Mm -hmm. And so it would only be really, you can only paint with a broad brush if you had a very homogeneous market. Like Celebration Florida is Disney World's development, right? You know, it, every house is cool and is awesome and it's basically the same. Okay. Just a different version of awesome. But when you have a breadth like you do in the Milwaukee Metropolitan Statistical Area, you've got a lot of sub-markets. So we're doing the best that we can. Uh, by the way, uh, so Naples still down 25%. Here's a surprise, but not really after we talk about it for a moment. Kenosha, still down 17% from the peak. So your $200,000 home is that you bought at the peak is one sixty-five, and that's because Kenosha is really part of the Chicago metropolitan area where home prices are still 16.7% below peak value. So even though they're up 3.5% three, three from a year ago. And then uh, Minneapolis, by the way, where David went to school and lived for a little while, still 7.6% below peak. I didn't. I would have thought that that would have been back all the way. Yeah. All right, when we come back from this uh, next break, let's talk about refi phobia or the Fed. We'll let David decide when we come back. You're listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show. If you have a question for us, you can reach Brian or David this morning at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest on the Acunet Mortgage toll-free talk line at 1-800-877-1620. Helping you find a place to call home. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. Stephen Avery says new DNA testing will exonerate him in the murder of Teresa Halbach. Is that really the case? You can get the whole story on Wisconsin's Afternoon News at 521 tomorrow afternoon. Right now, though... It's the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show here on 620 WTMJ. Brian Wickert with it and David Wickert with us. So uh, we've spun the wheel, either refi phobia or Fed rate numbers based on Janet Yellen's comments from this past week. What's it going to be, David? We decided on uh, Fed, the Federal Reserve, because that kind of leads us into the refi thing, because basically the alarm clock has been set. Yeah. Uh, Janet Yellen speaking at the annual confab that's hosted by which Federal Reserve, Dave, you know? The Federal Reserve, it's not the main Federal Reserve that hosts the Jackson Hole Is it annual. Is the West Coast? Uh, Kansas City. What? I, I don't know why, but it's just the tradition. Kansas City decided, you know, every year we're going to hold this confab in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Name the most famous person from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, don't know. I think it's Dick Harrison Ford. Ford. But, okay, Harrison. What? Oh, what? Okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, there we go. A little trivia. I don't know if he's from Jackson Hole, but for well, sure. Well, he, he, he lives there. Yeah. Okay. Or he lived there. Okay, well, anyway, so they all get together. Central bankers through, from throughout the world gather there. It's a party. Yeah, sure. it's a party. I'm sure they're just, you know, got their slide rules out and their economic forecasts and all yeah, that. Anyway, is, yeah. so Janet Yellen speaks Friday morning and moves the markets by saying, David, what did she say? Uh, she quoted as saying, in light of the continued solid performance of the labor market and our outlook for economic and activity and inflation, I believe the case for an increase in the federal funds rate has strengthened in recent months. Whoop, quote. Whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop. So uh, now all of a sudden the interest rate for the United States government to borrow money for a period of 10 years went from about 1.52% on Thursday, and it jumped up to 1.63%. Now, what... And by the way, the odds, you know, people place bets on uh, the movement of the federal funds rate. And right now, I think that's up to about 40% for their September meeting, which occurs September 21st. But what this really boils down to for all of us homeowners uh, here in America or home buyers is two things are going to happen. Uh, already, long term interest rates, like 30 year fixed rates, inched up. Inched up a little bit. Uh, on Thursday, we could do 3.375 with 25% equity and all the other right stuff on a $200,000 loan with no points. Just our normal $1,165 of uh, loan cost, actual loan cost. What did we end the day at? Uh, it would have cost three-tenths of a point to do 3.375. APR is 3.42, which in real numbers is about $600 in points. Yeah, $600 in points. So that's... That was the impact immediately of her comments. But then the other thing is if, 
if and when the Fed does actually raise interest rates, that will have an immediate impact on the prime rate, yes. which is the rate that banks allegedly charge their best customers, and which is the index tied to like 99 and 44, 100% of all the home equity lines of credit in America. So right now, David, the prime rate is at 3.5%. All right. So most people, though, on their home equity lines don't actually have a rate at prime, unless you got it a while back. Because prime went so low that banks decided we can't actually lend to people at prime because it was down as low as three and a quarter for a while. And, you know, back in 2009, 2010, you could actually get a home equity line of credit right at the prime rate. But more recently, the going rate has been prime plus a half. Okay, so if you're the best customer with the best credit and you still have 20% equity when considering the maximum you can borrow on the home equity line of credit, you're currently sitting at four. Mm -hmm. And soon, at some point in the not-too-distant future, go into four and a quarter. Correct. Now, if you have less than 20% equity, it's more like prime plus 1%. So you're probably around four and a half or 4.75. So you're soon to be tickling in that five number. That's probably a good reason right now. Sounding the alarm, you know, don't the hit the clock has button. been set. The clock has been set. That's a really good reason. If you've got a big chunk of money on your home equity line of credit that you really have no hope or intention of paying off, why not weld it together with your first mortgage? Mm -hmm. You know, that's we're. Are you seeing a lot of that? David does a lot more loans per week than I ever yes. do. So, are you seeing that as a continuing? For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, if you're sitting there with twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars on your line of credit. You know, and your current mortgage rate is still sitting there at four or even three point eight seven five. We can probably put that to get those two things together. You do have to have twenty percent remaining equity to put a home equity line of credit balance together with your first mortgage. But, but with the home appreciation you just well, know, maybe, we right. can, maybe we can do that. Yeah, what an elegant uh, tie in combination there, David. <laughs> Propers to you. All right, when we come back after the news, we are now going to give you the five. Reasons. I'm going to call them excuses that people put off, that they keep hitting the snooze bar instead of uh, pulling the trigger on a refi. Right here on the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show on 620 WTMJ. It's now 1030 as we head over to the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom and an update with Colleen Bolin. Thank you, Steve. Police in Milwaukee investigating a couple of shootings. They're investigating the death of a 30-year-old man. Police say that man was shot last night near Paul. Don't break the bank to get into a house. Back to the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickard on 620 WTMJ. Brian Wickard and David Wickard with us on this Sunday morning. So the five excuses that people seem to spit out when it comes to not wanting to refi. That's right. We call it a condition known as refi-phobia. Yes. Consider us the doctors with the cure. You know, I found out my brother, the barber, Dave. Is known as Dr. Dave the Barber. I never knew that. What? He's cutting hair for years and years and years. He's surgical in his... Uh... Yeah, yeah. He's Dr. Dave the haircut man. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so we're the mortgage doctors here. Here to cure your bad case of refi phobia. Reason number one. Reason... It's, I'm going to call an excuse, like you said, Steve. Rates aren't low enough. You know, sure. my granddaddy, my great-grandfather told me that my I... My friend at work said... My friend at work said rates had to go down 1%. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here... At, Four, and I haven't heard you advertise, Mr. Wickard, on any of your radio. I said you can do 3% on a 30-year fix yet, so I'm standing pat until I get down to that 1%. That went out with the buggy whip because the reason that old rule of thumb exists is that it used to cost you 1% of the loan balance, which would be two grand on a $200,000 loan, plus your regular appraisal, closing, and title fees, yep. to do a refinance. Well, now we routinely, every day, David is out there quoting people rates for saying, Here's what your rate is with no points and $1,160 of our closing costs, appraisal, title, closing, credit report. That's all we charge. Not any of those junk fees that the other guys charge. Them. And by the way, but here for usually just an eighth percent more, you know, right now that no cost rate, David, is 3.5 .5 on any loan term between 21 and 30 years. And we'll actually pay for you. Yes. Okay. So that if you have a $50,000 loan balance, then the 1% rule actually applies. It might even be the 2% rule because you just don't have a big mortgage, so saving interest on it is not a big deal. Sure. But the costs are fixed, $1,160. Yep. 
if you have a three hundred thousand dollar loan, you might only have to have your rate go down. Well, a half percent is fifteen hundred bucks right. in interest. That's right. more than a hundred dollars a month. I was going to say less than a half percent, okay. three eighths, zero point three seven five. Okay, so that rule of thumb is dumb, and it's really just an excuse, I think, for a lot of people, because they think it's too much of a chore. You know, it's going to be too much hassle, too much work. That's number two. Well, folks, we now have e-signed at Acunet Mortgage, just like the nation's largest online lender, you know, the guys with the rocket. So you don't have to do any paperwork anymore. You can just click, 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 click. And we save working. a tree, too. And save a tree. Yeah. Very popular, and it's working great. Uh, along those same lines, for most of our borrowers who just have normal jobs, all we need to document your income is a W-2 and a pay stub. You've got to point to the income you're going to use to keep paying back that mortgage. There you go. Um, I noticed recently, by the way, the ads for the nation's largest home, online home lender, you know, the guys with the rocket, they are really touting the convenience. You know, we can automatically verify your income and your bank account information. That's that's the theme of their latest ad. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't do the income thing, okay? So you're going to have to give us a pay stub and a W-2. We can do the asset account verification, but you have to give us your bank account and password which even a millennial that I talked to last week was like, what? I don't want to do that. We've covered that a number of times on the show. Um, but, you know, we are going to save you about $3,000 in closing costs versus the nation's largest online lender for the same rate. Yeah. So we think that's probably worth it to most people. You know, could you give us a pay step and a W-2? Yeah. Now, we will need your tax returns if you own a business or if you have a lot of commission income. But, again, most people, we can get that right from their tax preparer. Or if they do their own taxes... On something like TurboTax or whatever. You've got those a PDF of that. You've got a PDF anyway. of it anyway. You just upload that to our secure site. So we really try to make it easy. Okay? Or too much. Uh, you, you note that some people want to uh, keep their loan balance right where it is. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's totally fine if you want to bring the daily accrued interest to the closing. Closing. Yeah. Yep. That's totally fine. Keep you right on the same pace. All right. So then uh, here, related to that, reason number three is I don't want to go back to 30 years. No problem. Okay. And we're doing a lot of that. At least okay. I, I find that we offer it to people. You want a 27-year mortgage? No problem. You got it. 23, any number of years between 10 and 30. Okay. Uh, so we got that covered. Oh, it's going to cost too much. It's going to cost too much. We already kind of covered that with the 1% rule. We can pay all your loan costs for you. Right now, the no loan cost APR on a 15-year fixed with 20% equity, actually, and all the other right stuff is 2.99. On the 30-year fixed, it's 3.5. And, and lastly, number five, I'm afraid my house won't appraise out. Well, guess what? I'm going to say in about one out of four cases, we don't even need an appraisal. So we can address that. All right, there's your top five refi phobia excuses for not refinancing. When we come back, I'm going to tell you about a real story where somebody chose a 10-year refinance five years ago and how it wasn't ended up being, it ended up being a bad choice. I'll tell you why and what we're doing about it now when we come back. And if you have a question, you can reach us at 414-799-1620 or throughout the Midwest. On the Acunet Mortgage toll-free talk line, that number is 1-800-877-1620. Getting you into the home of your dreams. Here's more of the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. So who on the Packers still needs to prove they deserve a roster spot with just one exhibition game left? And what position on the team most concerns you? Weigh in with Justin Garcia during Wisconsin Sports Weekend. That's coming up at 12.07 today right here on WTMJ. Brian Wickard is with us and David Wickard is with us. It's the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Hour here on WTMJ. So a story from the front lines of real estate involving a 10-year fixed rate refinance strategy that didn't quite work out right. Yep, I got a call from an acquaintance whose uh, voicemail message went something like this. You know, hi, Brian. Um, you know, I want to talk to you about refinancing our mortgage because um, we want to get the monthly payment down. My, my wife uh, has separated from uh, her employment, her from her employer. She worked there for 40 years, count them, 40 years. She was an officer of the company, publicly traded company, and they, you know, let her go. And, you know, so now we're kind of taking a look at this mortgage that we have and want to do something about it. <clears throat> okay, so a little bit of a challenge, right? 
because we need to prove income. To, uh, the, the, the husband in this case is a little older, and he's already mostly retired. But what they had done five years ago, and not done it through Acunet, which is okay, they've gotten themselves a 10-year fixed-rate mortgage where the monthly payment was $3,600. That's just the principal and interest. Yikes. Wow. Okay. On top of their taxes are around $10,000 a year. So their monthly nut is now, you know, $4,500 a month. Okay. And so we get a lot of people that are anxious to pay off their mortgage. They are hell-bent for leather, which David never heard that phrase before. Yeah. And he Googled it. and I Apparently it's a horse reference. I, yeah. Okay. It's a horse. <laughs> reckless horse racing. Okay. They are. You're the equestrian type. Oh, n- n- no. Okay. But my sister is. Okay. So anyway, so they are like, I want to get this thing paid off before retirement. Very common. But the problem is that payment, that high payment is not optional. Can I say, and I, I say this, I'm sure everyone who sits near me gets tired of me saying this, but I articulate that you can always pay your mortgage faster. That's right. But you cannot yes. pay it slower. Yeah. <laughs> you pay it Why not slower, they're going to take the house back. Month? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. So the, this is a challenging situation, right, because now she doesn't have income. And, of course, she's on severance for another nine months, but that doesn't cut it, does it, David? Correct, because it's not going to last for at least three years. That's the test in mortgage lending land is in order to use income, we have to have a reasonable expectation that it's going to last for another three years. That's true for child support as well, just as a sidebar. Oh, as a source of income. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're using child support or maintenance as a qualifying bit of your income, but it's going to run out in two years. It's going to turn 18. You can't use it. Okay. Anyway, so what to do? What to do? Well, luckily, we have access to a very unique portfolio loan program where, and we've talked about this once or twice before on the show, we can turn assets into qualifying income. Normally, you can't do that. The normal federal rule book says you can only use taxable income, but what we can do uh, is and these people happen to have because they're near retirement age a, a little over a million dollars of combination of retirement and non-retirement assets. Mm-hmm. We give that a 70 percent, uh, or we give it a 30 percent haircut. So we turn the million into 700,000 for the purpose of this calculation. Do the math for me. Then we take 700,000 dollars and we divide it by 60 months. And you get a little bit more than what is that, David? So Eleven thousand six hundred dollars. Aha. So the idea is that. We are going to pretend that if you took eleven thousand dollars, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, out of that asset pile, mm-hmm. you could make your payment for not just three years but five. This is called asset depletion. Okay, but then there was another question that came up. These folks had a home equity line of credit with a bank, and like a lot of people that have home equity lines of credit, they will prefer to keep them open. Right? So it's like, well, no, 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 we really want to keep that open. Now, and they had something like a $35,000 balance on it, and a maximum they could borrow of $135,000. I, I did not prep David for this question, but what's the problem with if we tried to keep that home equity line of credit open? You'll get a worse rate because in the eyes of the lending world, there's more risk. When there's two mortgages on your property, that's right. there's more risk. Okay, that's one issue, but what's the other issue? That home equity line of credit lender is going to want to underwrite the loan. And now this borrower doesn't have income anymore. Well, they might not say yes. Plus, they charge every bank out there. I don't care if you're a platinum, super platinum, red carpet, gold with, you know, Jimmy's on top. They're going to charge you a subordination fee of at least 250 bucks to evaluate that. And so we're going to end up consolidating their two balances because the same bank that I'm selling the first mortgage to also uses the asset depletion program for their home equity lines of credit. So we will open, hmm. open a new home equity line of credit as well. So I think this is going to have a very happy ending, uh, very unique and challenging situation, but I think instructive in a lot of ways. All right, when we come back, let's just talk a little bit more about that topic of, hey, what happens when you want to refinance, but you have this home equity line of credit out there? What problems does that present, and what are the solutions when we come back? Right here on the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show on WTMJ. Home buying advice from the guys who know it best. This is the AccuNet Mortgage and Realty Show with Brian Wickert on 620 WTMJ. And David Wickert. And now we're up to the obstacles of kind of navigating through a home equity line of credit and making sure you're kind of doing the right things. 
Right. And, you know, earlier in the show we had the top five reasons or excuses that people use not to refinance. This is kind of a real issue that we deal with every day. Yeah, and it's kind of newer, or the consequences are newer, and that's somebody who's got a home equity line of credit on their current residence. And I, I, this comes up a lot. Um, and a lot of times, like me, I have a home equity line of credit on, on our house here, but I don't have a balance on it. And yet, just the mere presence of that home equity line of credit spoils or worsens the pricing that a person can get. Because it's the possibility of you pulling on that line. That's right. So, so here it is in, in real, real dollar uh, terms. The least that it can hurt you on a $200,000 home is 750 bucks in closing costs. That's like your best case scenario if you have great credit. And when you take a look at the home equity line, so let's say you have $200,000 first mortgage, you had a $100,000 home equity line with zero balance on it. Uh, you'd need a $400,000 value, okay? And you'd still have 20% equity. Actually, you could have a $120,000 HELOC. Anyway, if you have 20% equity remaining, you're going to get whacked, 750 bucks. It's three-eighths of a point on the loan balance. So it's not a flat fee. It's a percentage of the loan. Your worst-case scenario is you don't have great credit. I just ran the numbers on this. For somebody that has 679 credit, it's going to cost you $2,500 to keep that home equity line of credit if you have less than 20% equity and uh, you're just trying to do a regular refinance. Or if we translated that into rate, instead of getting a 3.99 30-year fix with no points, you'd have to settle for a 4.375 rate. Because, no, I want to keep that home equity line of credit open. So that is a real stumbling block. And it's relatively new. So, you know, we get a lot of people who's like, no, I want to keep my home equity line of credit. Last time I did this, Last I didn't time, have to close yeah, it. That's right. Well, this time you're really smarter to do it. And when Becky and I refinanced our house in the spring, I closed my line of credit. Yep. Closing it. I don't want to pay that extra fee. And then I just reopened it afterwards. So, you know, most banks and financial institutions out there make it real easy to put a home equity line of credit in place. But I can't tell you the number of times that I've had that conversation. People hmm. are resistant to it. They don't want to do it. No, I want to keep that home equity line of credit open. So we just have to slow down, and then we just lay out, hey, first of all, Mr. Smith, if you keep that open, it's going to cost you $2,000 or a quarter extra in price and blah, blah, blah. That usually gets them off the you know, being stuck to that idea. Well, which was the conversation you were trying to do side-by-side -side comparisons with the story you just told was, yeah, here's the difference between keeping it and including it in the new loan or right. closing it. Or oh, By the way, that couple of guys told you how they had a $3,600 payment. Their new payment, including rolling in the $40,000 balance on their home equity line or 35 or whatever it is, it's going to go down to $700 a month. More affordable. Yeah, way, way more affordable than the 3600 uh, that they're paying every month. But, right it, but again, puts the power back in their hands on, because I think the way you described it, they were they had a 10-year fixed five years ago. So, shoot, they're five years yeah. away maybe from paying off that mortgage. That's right. But now they're not strapped in to that accelerated payment. If they're feeling flush on a month-to-month -month basis, shoot, like we said, you can always pay it faster, right. but you can't pay your 10-year fixed slower. But what they're really trying to do is give themselves some relief because that was the woman who got laid off in that story. You know, she wants to find a new job. Sure. And so they just want to have their monthly budget be a lot more affordable so they don't have to dip into their uh, asset nest egg, sure. you know, to, to help supplement their monthly payment. Um, and just, by the way, another rule of thumb, when you get down to a 10-year fixed rate, the interest rate almost doesn't matter anymore because each monthly payment you're making is so much principal and such little amount of interest that the interest rate doesn't matter. So when we do quote people, like David had a case this week where he was quoting somebody a, a 10 year fixed, it's like, do you want 2.75 and you got to pay some closing costs, you know, like let's say $2,000, or do you want 2.99 and we'll pick up the closing costs? It's a no brainer. Because yeah. the difference in the payment was literally like $3 a month. Yes. Just because so much of the monthly payment is going to principal at that point. 
All right, so the takeaways from today's show are Janet Yellen saying she's really getting excited about raising rates. This coming Friday, the Friday before Labor Day weekend, we get the monthly jobs report. And she said right in her statement, I'm going to be looking at the jobs report. Right, so if that looks good, uh, I think we're going to see another uptick in interest rates. Don't let refi phobia stand in the way of uh, refinancing right now. If you've been a procrastinator, don't hit the snooze button anymore. Now is the time to click on the blue button. Don't click the snooze button. Click the blue button at Acunet.com and find out how much you can save and how easy we can make it on a refinance. Or you can also uh, get started on a rock solid pre-approval to buy because we're seeing an uptake in purchase application volume too. That's all we got time for. Click on that blue button today. You've been listening to the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show here on 620 WTMJ. Colleen Boland is just around the corner with an update from the WTMJ 24-hour newsroom next. The preceding was a paid program. Advice and opinions expressed during the Acunet Mortgage and Realty Show are solely that of the hosts or guests of Acunet Mortgage and Acunet Realty Advisors and not WTMJ Radio or Scripps Media Incorporated.